at Atlanta, Princess of Arcadia. Her story begins with her father, King Iasis. Recently, the king's wife had given birth to their new daughter, but in his eyes, this child was unworthy. Ashamed that he had a daughter instead of a son, he leaves Atalanta on a mountain to be devoured by wild animals. From this point on, Artemis, goddess of the hunt, took the young child under her wing, and in doing so, she provided her with divine protection. A sacred bear wandered near Atalanta and ended up nurturing her instead. Picture a big ass bear rocking a baby to sleep. Time passes. The bear and the child are resting to replenish their energy. Twigs shatter from the footsteps of wandering hunters. Suddenly, they stumble upon Atalanta and soon after take the child into their care. She develops quickly. The young girl couldn't be more thankful for the gratitude she was shown. As such, she made a vow to help the neglected youth. Artemis was also devoted to eternal virginity, so Atalanta pledged to follow the same concept. It wasn't long before she became an exceptional huntress. The young girl transitions to a young woman, but her mentality remains intact. She didn't seek marriage and spent most of her time sharpening her skills in the wilderness. Being a woman of such caliber, the clansmen were starting to get discouraged by her talents. They decided to get revenge for this humiliation. One day, Atalanta, minding her own business, was approached by two centaurs. The centaurs made an attempt to take her purity by force and deprive the princess of her stature, but she wasn't having it and ended up killing them both in return. Contrary to their plan, her reputation became even more impressive than it was before. Years pass. The princess is sprinting through the city of Iolcus. It was only a matter of time before departure. Swiftly, she arrives in front of a large ship. But this wasn't just any ship. It was a vessel that encompassed heroic minds from all over Greece, warriors such as Heracles and Asterion. These heroes were called the Argonauts. But how did this group take form? So, in the ancient city of Iolcus, there was a man named Jason who desired to obtain the throne. However, the king would only give him the seat if he could acquire an item called the Golden Fleece. Gaining possession of this relic would ultimately prove whether or not he was worthy. Jason accepts the task. In time, he forms the Argonauts in order to complete this mission. This is where Atalanta comes in. She scurried on board praying to Artemis for a safe voyage. Why was she on this ship? Well, I'm glad you asked. And quite frankly, it was for the penis. Anything else was merely a byproduct. See, prior to this, Atalanta had taken interest in a young man named Maligar. So much interest that she followed this man onto the ship. Damn girl, you thirsty as fuck. Now, Maligar had a wife and a child but he left them behind so he could take the trip. I'm not sure if he told her he had his wife and child, but I'm pretty sure he didn't. The ship sets out for Colchis where the fleece is located. As the trip goes on, the two start to become good friends. Before they could take their relationship any further, an oracle warns her about the ramifications. Hey, don't do it. Don't do what? Oh, don't you play innocent with me. I'm letting you know right now, if you lose your virginity, Artemis is going to fuck you up. That is all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm about to go get my meat sucked. <clears throat> Smoke bomb. <laughs> and Jason finally arrives at Colchis. When he gets there, he faces even more challenges than the one he received initially. The last of which included taking down a fire-breathing dragon. In a fatal attempt to surmount her adversary, Atalanta ends up getting wounded. Subsequent to this injury, the princess is healed by the sorceress named Medea, Jason's wife. With their back against the wall, Medea is forced to make a potion that puts the dragon to sleep. Jason snatches the fleece and they leave. When they return, the king still refused to relinquish the throne. Aggravated, Medea constructed a plan to have the king murdered by his daughters. She succeeded. The heroes attend his funeral afterwards. So, in the event of someone's death, the Greeks partook in athletic competitions called the funeral games. This was considered honorary in regard of an ending life. 
the matches begin. Adelina remains distant from her contemporaries. She was never really too fond of her peers because most of the time, they were completely irrational. However, there was one man named Peleus who always treated her with respect. Peleus was also the father of Achilles. The warrior challenges Atalanta to a wrestling match, but with her unmatched prowess, she leaves the ring victorious. News arrived from King Onius II that a monster was terrorizing the city of Caledon. Turns out Onius made a sacrifice to the gods, but he forgot Artemis. Bad idea. She sends the Caledonian boar, which is pretty much a giant pig that destroys literally everything in its path. It ravaged the land, it killed the men, and it destroyed the crops. As they received this information, the heroes started to leave the games and make their way toward Caledon. This included Atalanta and Maligar. They arrive in quick fashion. With Maligar being the son of King Onius, his father put him in charge of organizing the hunters. Unfortunately, before he could even start, he had a dispute with his two uncles over Atalanta being in on the hunt. They were not alone. Many of the men were furious that a woman was joining in, but to her defense, Maliga persuaded them to overlook such a matter. The hunt was on. And look what we have here. Atalanta gets the first shot off on the boar. How do you like me now? The battle rages on. Eventually, Maligar took his spear and initiated the final blow on the wild beast. Since this attack proved to be the most fatal, he was rewarded with the boar's hide. Soon after, he gives his reward to the princess as a gift. Now the hunters are hella mad. His uncles wouldn't stand for it. They told him, if you don't want the skin, cool, but we should be next in line. The two uncles make a subtle attempt to take the skin away from Atalanta but Maligar slays them on the spot. Word gets around. His mother comes to find out what he did to her brothers. She gets mad and decides to use his weakness against him. Upon his birth, Maligar's life had been synchronized with the special law. The sages emphasize how he would die if this law were to be completely burned out. Hearing this, his mother removed the log from the fireplace and stored it for his protection. In her recent distress, she tosses the log into a fire, consuming Maligar's life along with it. The princess leaves Caledon, grieving her friend's death. When she returned home, she hung the reward in a sacred grove devoted to Artemis. Now that Atalanta has built such a grand reputation, guess who comes crawling back? That's right, her father. He then has the gall to say that she turned out better than any son ever would have. Aight bruh. Despite the fact that this man is a complete douchebag, she still sees him as her father. So the two make amends and she returns home. Now that she's reached adulthood, her father insisted that she get married. The princess had no intentions of retracting her sacred oath, so she came up with a plan. The only person that could marry her had to defeat her in a foot race. She already knew no one was capable of this feat. This way, she could appease her father and still remain a virgin. Warriors poured in left and right. Any contender who couldn't complete this task would be executed by the spear. Naively, people still came, and one by one, they lost their lives. But there was one man who stood out from the rest. This man was Hippomenes. Prior to this race, he begged the goddess Aphrodite for her assistance. Aphrodite wasn't really a fan of the virgin concept. Her model was, if it opened and closed, the pussy should flow. Therefore, she had no problem lending him a hand. She gives him three golden apples that would help him in his trial. Atalanta was disappointed that such a nice looking man had to die, but she had no intentions of throwing the race. Hippomenes prays to the apples and walks toward the starting line. The race begins. Hippomenes takes the lead in an instant. But not for long. Atalanta catches up and passes right by him in a flash. He throws the first apple in her tracks. Immediately, Atalanta comes to a stop and goes off the track to pick it up. She returned back to her course afterwards. This continued until his final apple, which he ends up throwing in the bushes. 
Atalanta dashed toward the bush for the apple. When she came out, she realized it was too late. Hippomenes had already passed the finish line, celebrating his victory. Atalanta was now his wife. But what was so captivating about these apples? In Greek culture, golden apples are considered divine food among the gods. With Atalanta's nature being that of a wild animal, it was impossible for her to resist them. Hippomenes was exhilarated. He was so excited that he forgot to thank Aphrodite. So she cursed him. After the race, he went to the temple of Zeus to celebrate. While they were there, Aphrodite filled the couple with lust, causing him to seduce the princess right there inside the temple. She has now broken her vow. Zeus was infuriated by this disrespect. He punished the couple by turning them into a pair of lions. It is for this reason that she has acquired aspects of a lion in Apocrypha. At the time, the Greeks believed lions couldn't mate with their own species, only leopards. Thus, Atalanta and Hippomenes would be forced to go their separate ways. Damn, that's a sad ass ending. That about wraps it up. If you enjoyed the video, please like it up so we can get this trending. Feel free to add information as you see fit. And let me know what you guys think about it. It's your boy, Saya. I'm out.